Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you a review of the Roland SPD-1 Kick. The Roland SPD series are a series of sound pads designed for musicians to use live. There are currently four different ones available. You can get the SPD-1 Percussion Pad, the SPD-1 Electro Percussion Pad, the SPD-1 WAV Pad, and the SPD-1 Kick Pad. They all basically operate in very similar ways, but with different sounds built in, and the retail price of them is around £170 each. Today's review is all around the SPD-1 Kick. So let's kick off by talking about design. The SPD-1 Kick feels incredibly well made, and is made of metal pretty much all the way around. It has a nice wedge shape, and the pad itself is made of this pretty hard wearing material with plenty of grip. This means it'll easily take you hitting it with a drumstick or with your foot over and over again. It's heavier than I expected it to be, and it weighs around 900 grams. The SPD-1 series comes in a different colour depending on which version you pick up, and the kick comes in this bright yellow-green type colour. The top of the device has four knobs. One for scrolling through sounds, one for tuning, one for reverb and distortion, and one for volume. There's also an instrument variation button for flicking through the sound banks, and a light to indicate when the pad is triggered. On the base of it, you have the battery compartment, and it takes four AA batteries, and the base also has two pads for getting plenty of grip on the floor, plus screw holes for using the mount that comes with the kick if you want to use it with your drum kit. Then the rear of the device has the input for the DC power, an on-off switch, a mono output, and a headphone socket. Then finally, the left-hand side has the adjustment controls for sensitivity and threshold, plus a micro USB port, which you can use to add your own sounds. So let's dive a little bit more into the spec. By default, the device comes with 22 percussion sounds, including kick drums, bells, and cymbals. We'll go through all of these sounds shortly. You can also import your own sounds and add up to 12 of your own. This will replace some of the secondary sounds, but it does give you up to about 24 on the device. If you want to add your own sounds, you need to add them as WAV files via USB. If you add your own, you can't add anything longer than 5 seconds, and unhelpfully, the manual in the box doesn't tell you how to add sounds. However, if you're trying to work out how to do that, I have included a link in the description to a tutorial that I've made. You can use the SPD-1 kick with your foot, with drumsticks, or with your hands. In terms of battery life, the AA battery should give you around 6 hours, depending on the quality of your battery. This isn't particularly great, but probably you'll end up using a power adapter with it. So let's talk more about usability and sounds. If we work through the sounds that come with it, you can hear the standard kick, the hard kick, the percussion kick, the stomp box, the TR kick, the jingles, the kabasa, the ankle bracelet, the cowbell, the clap, and the cymbal. If we press the instrument variation, we can work through some of the secondary sounds. The tuner knob is a really good way to adjust those sounds, for example if you want a slightly deeper kick. And then the FX lets you add some reverb or distortion. And you can adjust the intensity of these effects. And then of course the volume does exactly what it says. It's worth saying at this stage that it packs in plenty of volume, and that when I use it live I tend to keep the volume at halfway so I can adjust it slightly depending on the sound. Personally I really like most of the built-in sounds, and in particular I've used the TR kick and the standard kick quite a lot live, especially with a little bit of reverb. The extra controls for sensitivity and threshold are also worth talking about. Sensitivity is all about whether you can register different levels of sounds. If the sensitivity is all the way to the left, then a light tap will produce a quieter sound than a heavier hit. For me, I have the sensitivity all the way to the right, so that every tap with my foot produces a heavy drum sound. If I was using this with sticks, I'd probably have it somewhere in the middle. The threshold is essentially about how heavy or soft you need to hit the pad for it to register. Having a threshold turned all the way to the left means that even a light tap registers, and turning all the way to the right means that you need to hit it quite hard for it to register. So now we've talked about all the functions, the important question is what's it like to use live? 
In the few weeks I've had this device, I've used it at home when I've been messing around, but I've also used it live so I can add some beat whilst playing guitar. It's much easier to use with your foot while sitting down, but I have managed to use it live while standing up. And the threshold and sensitivity settings mean I can get a heavy, consistent sound throughout my set. If I'm honest, I'm not a huge fan of the bells or cymbal noises, but I love the kick noises. So finally for this review, what's the verdict on this device? I picked up one of these because I wanted something I could use in my live setup to add some beat, as I always gig when it's just me and a guitar. For me, the SPD-1 kick does exactly what I wanted it to. It gives me the ability to add a very basic beat behind my live set. The ability to add your own sounds and adjust things like reverb are also really nice features to have. There are, however, a few downsides I want to briefly touch upon, but these are certainly not make or breaks. One, I found it mildly irritating that for the price you pay for the device, you don't get a USB cable. I'm sure it wouldn't have hurt them just to throw one in. Secondly, they also don't include instructions for adding your own sounds, and the process of connecting it to your computer isn't particularly simple. There is a supplementary manual on the website that you can find, but I've also made a tutorial which I've linked below. Finally, I'm not a big fan of all of the sounds. For example, I don't think the cymbal sounds particularly good. Of course, this is all personal preference. All in all, however, if you want an electronic alternative to some of the passive stomp boxes out there in order to add some rhythm to your live set, then this is well worth picking up. For me, I feel like it really adds something into my live setup and it's small enough to fit into my guitar bag at the front. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you've got any questions, just stick them below and I will try and answer those. Please consider subscribing to my channel because that really helps me out and I'll see you guys again soon.